Father, I ask you in your mercy and your grace, let this anointing that you've placed upon me that you've allowed me to live in, Father, I ask you in your mercy and your grace to allow the people that are in this place to live in it too. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that in your mercy tonight, that no matter what's going on in the different folks' life that are here, Lord, we know that it's only by the act of your mercy and grace that you allow us to experience this heavenly realm and live in it. And Father, we don't want anybody to be without these wonderful things that you've freely given. But Lord, you see how your people are distracted and how they're overwhelmed by so many things, how so many thoughts and ideas have lodged in their thinking. Tonight, Lord, I ask you to correct the, the thinking realm. Hey, uh, Emily, could you just come here for just a little, a little bit? I'm thinking about something. Actually, I'm hearing something in the spirit. And There's better water for you to drink tonight. <laughs> Much better water than that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. There's no reason for anybody in this place to be sick or diseased. There's no reason at all for anybody in this place to be tormented or to be afflicted. There's no reason. For anybody to live a miserable, upset life with lack. There's no reason for anybody in this place to be hungry and thirsty for unrighteousness or wickedness or to allow sin in the line. Not when there's the presence of Jesus. Not when there's the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of holiness himself, the spirit of truth. There's no reason for a person, anybody in this place, to live under the influence of a lie or a deception or a threat or a fear. Not when God is your trust. Not when God is your provider, your protector, your keeper. He watches over you. He's your glory. He's a lifter of your head. There's no reason. The doubt should rule your life another day. That you should turn to your own will and turn to your own way and turn your own desires and fight with God about things He don't want you to have. It's about time God's people abandon all other things and turn their hearts to Him, begin to seek Him so they can find out what it is they need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you that the power of the living God is shaking the earth right now. Yes. I've never felt the presence of the Lord in His anointing. I've never felt the manifest presence of the living God and seen more things in the Spirit than I have in the past month. There are great things going on in the realms of heaven right now. People sit by, occupied with the same things that have distracted them and kept them aloof and Away from God, it's time for you to come home. It's time for you to get right. It's time to get your heart right. It's time to get your heart into the things that belong to heaven. Grab a hold of your children and bring them with you. It's time for you to take authority that God has given you. Listen, think about this for me, with me just a minute, dear people. Father gave us the greatest power that exists, the greatest realm of authority known to all creation in the name of Jesus. That at gave that name to us to be able to ask whatever we will, to do whatever He had given us assignment authority to do, to, have a, to be able to have absolute power over all things in His name to cast out devils, command the sick and the disease to be cured, command fear to leave. It's time you get a, it's time you get a living faith. It's time you get a living faith. It's time. You want heaven? Get rid of the leaven. You get rid of the leaven, you're going to have heaven. 
you're going to begin to understand what it means to have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. Get rid of the leaven. The leaven of false doctrine. I say that any doctrine that cannot result in a living experience in God is false. It's false. It's presented somehow to you. False. It may be true. In analysis, it may be true, but it's false. Because it cannot produce in you the living Word of God. There's a problem. These things you want to change, you don't want to be left out another time. Because God's getting ready to move in such a glorious way by His Spirit to glorify the name of His Son. And it seems that there's only few who know how to touch heaven. If you don't know how to touch heaven, if you have not learned how to touch heaven and to be touched by Him. I was so blessed by Angelica prophesying the, uh, the night. I mean, you now know a realm. There's a realm that you now know. You listen to me. There's a realm that you now know. You're aware of. You can go there anytime you want to go. That's the wonderful thing. Once you step into this place in heaven, you know how to get there now. I'm never left without. I'm never in a place where I have to go and endure sorrow or endure fear or endure worry or endure discomfort or endure sickness or endure disease. I know how to go there. Hallelujah. I was, I was brought there first time by the Holy Ghost. He showed me what it looked like. He said, this is heaven. What do you think? <laughs> I said, I, I love it. He said, beautiful. He said, would you like to live here? Absolutely. You have to be willing to come. It's, it's, uh, the door is open to you, but you've got to be willing to come. Many people aren't willing to come. They're just, they're overwhelmed with their circumstances, overwhelmed with their frustration and their situations of life. And, and, and along the way, there was a man of God who spoke the word of the Lord and didn't listen. And so you missed, it was a missed opportunity to know how to go there. Along the way, there was a moving of the Spirit. And you did not know how to respond. And so the opportunity to be introduced to how to plug in evaded you. But God's a God of opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. After, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said, yield to me because I have many things I want to yeah. <laughs> reveal to you. And then what he said? He said, seek me and don't hold anything back from me. And I won't hold anything back because I'm not going to hold anything back from you. I love the word. <laughs> I love the word wherever I hear the word. I don't care if it's a four year old, 40 year old. Doesn't matter. The word of the Lord. Jesus, right now. To be touched by His glory, you'll never want the, everything about your life to change. Not some things. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Malaga de Bekirish Dabrabodi. I was close enough. Shikara Mambara de Vriti Kesuda. Mela de Bitarata. Randy, receive right now. Slip your hands, receive right now. See, you know how to go there, men. You have no excuse. Yeah. Gone, gone, gone. Jonathan, you lift your hands right by your daddy right now. Grab hold your head. Grab, grab hold your dad's hand. Now you learn to go away in the presence of the Lord. Now you learn to get your heart and your affections and your attitudes. And your emotions captivated by God. So many people have never learned how to even do that. They know nothing about that. With their intellect, they read the Bible and they try to figure out, how do I get my emotions right? How do I get my attitude right? How do I get my appetites right? How do I get my passions right? Ain't no way, man. Intellect never going to do nothing. God, the Holy Ghost, comes and fills us. Comes and fills us. 
And I know, about, I know about his love and his mercy and his grace. He's not leaving anybody out. There's no reason for you to hang on to a bad attitude. You're going to rob you of Jesus. You're going to exalt a bad attitude above Jesus? That's, an, that's just the most craziest thing I could imagine. What will you place above Jesus that will prevent him from being master and Lord of your life. I'm talking about your whole life. I'm not talking about your religious life. I'm not talking about your ideology life, your philosophy life. I'm talking about your emotions, your passions, your attitude, your thinking, your affections. Ah. Always just there, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This realm is life to me. Oh, this life is. This life that He's given to us is filled with His manifest presence. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for taking away the pain and the sickness and the disease and the sorrow. Father, I thank you for opening up the prison doors tonight. Uh, and I pray that your people won't shut themselves back in after you open them up. <laughs> Isn't he good? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't lift my hands high enough. I can't shout loud enough. I can't dance hard enough. I can't praise good enough. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we call upon your name right now. We ask you, Lord God, for your fire. We ask you, oh God, for your baptism, your refreshing, oh God, your work of grace in this place. Overwhelm every heart and soul and mind tonight in this place, oh God. Fill us up with everything that belongs to you. Use us, Father, with everything that belongs 
to us that you've given to us. Use us. Use us with everything that belongs to you, Father God, we pray. For we receive right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Oh, let them flow in ceaseless praise. That's what I really want. That's what I really want. So that's what he gave me. If you really want these things tonight, you'll have them and you'll, 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 you'll think, my, oh, what, a, what, what, what I've been missing out on all my life. I could have had his manifest presence overwhelming me. I can't describe what it's like. I, 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 would, I, 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 I said to the Lord yesterday, I said, Father, would you give me the ability to describe this work of grace that you've given and made so readily available to anyone who wants it that causes us to walk around in peace and joy and love and forgiveness and mercy and grace and, and goodness and truth. And the Lord's left it in a realm that cannot be described. It must be experienced. I said, Father, please. Please, Lord, let every person in the abiding place experience these things. Oh, God, truly, they come back again and again. They got to be hungry. It's like those women that came down from northern China when we were in central China because they heard about miracles that God was doing and no one was getting healed. Boy, I said, Lord, truly, they've got faith. Look how far they came. Look at the earnestness upon their hearts, upon their faces. The Spirit of the Lord said, tell them just to forget about their self and their problem and worship me. And as they did, they began to receive what heaven supplies. Don't hold anything back from him. He doesn't, honestly, Father's really not interested in what you know. He's really not impressed with anybody's intellect. Simon and all the other guys that were there in the, in that, at that dinner that night, they knew all the stuff, but they didn't have anything that he wanted. But the woman who came kissing him, the woman who came with the love and the affections, had everything that he desired, all that he was looking for. He's going to get my kisses. Amen. He's going to get my love and he's going to get my affection. I'm pour it out on him. I'm pour it. <laughs> Take my will and, and make it mine. Ah. It shall be no Take my heart, it is your own, and it shall be your royal throne. Oh, it shall be What an amazing work of God's grace that we can sit here tonight and say, my heart is your own. That we are allowed by the mercy and the grace of the living God to participate with the Holy Ghost so that he can make our heart the royal throne in which 
father reigns of our life. Oh, you can't have another bad day for the rest of your life when you step into the revelation of it. Father just wants us to speak his word and walk in the spirit. That's all. When the press of things and circumstances come upon you and you turn to him and you begin to worship him and you begin to adore him, Father there builds you up and strengthens you to do more in the faith. When all the threatening situations that are impossible can no longer move you, God's got you ready to shake nations. God's got you ready to do exploits. Tonight, I'm here talking to people of God, and I don't know really fully how many people here really fit the ticket, because it's your own will that decides. But I'm here tonight talking to those who are prepared to do great exploits in these last days. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't have any other interest. Not work interest, not career interest. Not any other earthly interest in ever coming to this realm. Not money interest, not fame interest. Nothing, nothing. Nothing else can be here. It's a place sanctified and separated and consecrated only for the love of the Father. Only for the purposes of the kingdom. There'll be nothing else there. It only belongs to the Father. It only belongs for His will. It only belongs for what He wants. Somebody said, Pastor, are you telling me to quit my job? No, just don't make it important. Stop making it important. Stop making it important. Calls to Gina Makalinga Pokanai. Father, tonight we ask you to forgive us for making other things important in our life. When you've given to us the grand prize of the ages, Christ Jesus, to come live and abide and dwell in us. You gave to us your divine purposes, your will, your plan. And Father, we pray tonight that we won't allow any other interest to ever distract us. That we won't be the smarty pants anymore. <laughs> Making our decisions on our own, thinking we know something. We know nothing, as we should. But if you and I take a hold of tonight the interest that Father has for us and recognize the day and time in which we live in, and allow the Spirit of the Lord to captivate our hearts, you know what He's going to do? He's going to teach us how to do exploits. He's going to teach us how to walk into a, where, a realm that the prophets of old looked at and saw far off, could not go there. Wanted to, but they could not access it. There's a place of heaven for you tonight that you never lose. You can ne you'll never lose it. I'm just going to read a couple of verses of Scripture here to you. In 1 John 2, 3, it says, Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And nothing's going to change that. Nobody's idea or concepts of grace. Nothing's going to change that. Here's how you know that you know him. Because you keep his commandments. But whoso keeps his word, 1 John 2, 5, in him truly the love of God is perfected. And hereby... We know that we know him. I obey him because I love him. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I obey him because I love him. Ah. And the more you get saturated and overwhelmed and learn how to get excited in the presence of the Lord and learn how to enjoy and have a wonderful, exciting time in interacting with the living God, the less interested you're going to be in worldly and sensual and devilish things. 
Most of the church cannot even begin to comprehend what it means to live a life free from sin. In fact, it is so foreign to most minds that they actually think it's false doctrine when it's literally the subject of the Bible. Literally the subject of the Bible that God would come and save us from our sins. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Deliver us from the prison of sin. But people haven't drank. They haven't been willing to take a drink. A drink that will so satisfy you that you'll be thirsty no more. Tonight, God is meeting with you in this place. A work of faith is taking, happening right now. That whosoever wills and desires to know this realm of God's divine power can live here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doors open to you tonight. You decide whether or not you want to come in. You don't come in with your intellect. You don't come in with your knowledge. You come in with your heart. Oh God, I want to come in. Something deep begins to happen. Something deeper than anything that you within yourself can create. Something that is created by the Holy Spirit himself. Those who yield to him. In 1 John 3, 19, we read, And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and a shall assure our hearts before him. And all that passage of Scripture is a great verse of Scripture to get captivated in tonight. I just extracted that verse from a very powerful passage about walking in the love of God and loving the brethren and obeying God and keeping his commandments and as a result having confidence towards God that whatever our heart don't condemn us. Man, I hear people talking fiery preaching, talking about moving into the realms of glory. I never get condemned. I'm just, I'm just right there going, just soaking it in, man. Soak. I love the truth. And all the way through it, my uprightness is intact. In and all I do is get filled up more with the Holy Ghost when I hear fiery preaching like that, calling people to repentance. Examine yourself, see if Christ is in you. Amen. Examine yourself tonight and see if God's in you. Tonight I'm calling you to examine yourself and see if God the Holy Ghost is in you. See if God the Father is in you. See if God Christ Jesus is in you. I tell you, the power of God is here. <laughs> I tell you, the transforming, miracle-working, life-changing power of God is here. First John three twenty four and says, "He that keeps his commandments, Hallelujah." Dwells in God. In him, he uses the pronoun. I'm just going to use God. It's a pronoun for God. And God dwells in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us. I want you to have a knowing kind of faith. I want you to know. I know I have these proofs. I demand these proofs in my life. Most important witness of being born of God, being born again, is that you overcome the world. And that's every form of its leaven. It's its false doctrine, it's its sorrow, it's its sadness, it's its strife, it's its envy, it's its neglect, it's its slothfulness, it's, it's, its, it's, it's its lukewarmness, it's its lethargy, it's its slothfulness, it's its immorality. It's its witchcraft, it's its stubbornness, it's its rebellion. How that do we overcome the world? How, what is the conquering power that overcomes the world? Our faith. And what is our faith? Christ is in me. Our faith, God lives and abides and dwells in me. I mean, too many people just have it in an intellect. <laughs> 
Oh, God dwells in me. They never have a manifest presence. They never have the fruit. They never have the glory of it. It's just an intellect, just a knowledge, and just a thinking realm. They're moved by their own emotions. They're moved by their own passions. And it's proven over and again. They've never been mastered by the emotions of the Holy Ghost. Never ma been mastered by the passion of the Holy Ghost. It's proven because, you know, uh, as soon as something comes along and begins to stir up anger or begins to stir up strife or begins to stir up hurt or begins to stir up an argument, right there they in it. Because it's their passions and their own emotions that they ruled by. Mm -hmm. Having not the Spirit of God, sensual. Listen. Holding the truth of God in unrighteousness. I tell you all, unrighteousness is bad. Some people stand around and point their finger at other people's unrighteousness when they got unrighteousness in their life. Get the leaven out and you'll live in heaven. Amen. Instantaneously. Will not be a labor. Won't have to work hard at it. It just happens. Amen. It's there. It's just an act of God's grace. Every person decides with himself how they will interact with God. Because Father's already decided he, would, he wills that all men be saved. He wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants everybody to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. He wants everybody to be born of the Spirit. He wants everybody to have their spirit joined under the Holy Spirit and be one spirit with Him, one life with Him. Oh, I want the whole world to know. <laughs> I want the whole world to know. I want the whole world to understand these things that here are now a reality in our lives. But you have to recognize, here you are sitting in a church where these things are most available. And then you've got to think about what are the consequences if you neglect so great a salvation, if you neglect to enter in, if you just... if you. Refuse to hearken to the voice of God and take a hold of this life. Where then is the light? Where is the witness of a changed life? Someone who now walks in the Spirit, lives by the Spirit, has the witness and the testimony of the Holy Ghost. God Himself, God the Holy Ghost coming and, 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 and providing proof and testifying, saying, yes, yes, she's born again, he's born again, they're born again. I must have his witness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a different kind of life. Than what most people understand in the Christian community. And we pray that that change, we pray that change begins with you. We know that he abides in us by the Holy Spirit, which he's given to us. Because Why? Because it's the abiding power of the Holy Spirit that gives us this the divine power and ability to do what He wills. To be what He's created. To obey Him. To love Him. To walk with Him. It's the witness. To be able to yield Him. Nobody can access, the natural mind can't access this realm. You have to be born of the Spirit to access this realm. And there are people who convince themselves that they write with God and they can't access the realm. You figure it out. You figure it out. First John 14, 4, 13 says, Hereby know we that we dwell in Him and that He is in us because he has given to us his spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's given to us the Holy Spirit. I've got the witness that he's in me. I have the spirit of holiness. I have something that moves me over into a heavenly realm that fills me with divine affections, that floods my soul with glory divine that gives to me 
The same desires and heart that, fa that, that, that the Father has that was revealed in His Son, Christ Jesus. I've been created in the, His image, in His likeness, after His own divine nature. I have the witness that that is a reality. It's here in my soul. It moves me to obedience. It moves me to hungering, thirsting. It moves me to shout and rejoicing. It moves me to the leap and to the dance. It moves me to this divine, holy emotion in affection. These things Father has for everyone. You have to understand that the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world will choke those things out. Will not allow those things to even exist or to develop in the person's life. You got to understand that the voices that are around us the God of this world, the spirit of disobedience, the principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness that are in high places right now, do everything that they can do to steal the word of God, or to pollute the word of God, or to twist in the life and the mind and the thinking the word of God that it does not bring forth the fruit of his word, a living relationship where God's in you and you know it. Somebody said, oh, it can't be like that. Oh, yes, it is like that. And John 14, 20 is one of my very favorite verses of Scripture. Of course, if you ran me very long, you recognize just about every <laughs> verse of Scripture. It's my favorite verse of Scripture. But I have a very favorite, favorite verses of Scripture are those that describe how God is living in me and how I'm living in Him. See, though I hear the voice of my beloved. He's calling me. He's calling me up. I believe that every revival, every great move of God is greater than the ones prior to them. That there is ever an increasing move of God among God's people. And Father does these, these mighty works of divine power and of grace, grace where he shakes his people and raises up those who are willing with greater signs and wonders and authority than that. Anybody that was before him, because of the increase of his government, there is no end. And that's what Father's doing once again, because there is another great move of God that is right now in the making. There's another great move of God right now in the making. People who have received a divine ability and the capacity to respond to what the great things that God would want to do, that God wants to do next. John chapter 14. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus said at that day and the, re the day that he was referring to is the day that the Holy Ghost would come to an individual, come to a person. To, in this particular instance, he's talking to the, his 12 disciples there, 11 disciples by this time, there with him on the night that he was betrayed, the night of Passover. And he said in that time, speaking of the day that the Holy Ghost would come, when the Holy Ghost comes to you, at that moment in that time, you will know that I am in the Father and that you are in me and that I am in you. Before that, it's just head knowledge. It's just a, con a con concept. It's just an, an idea, a, a, a statement that you can make, a hope so, a, a religious position that you take. Ha, <laughs> ha, ba, real pokaya. When the day comes, when the reality of the visitation of God 
comes to your life and is received into your heart. That moment in time, you, you know, hereby you know, you know that you know. There is, you have the proofs, you have the evidence, you are convinced beyond all doubt. There is a living faith, a living reality, a manifest presence that you've entered into. You never have to step out of. That day. Now you have the power that overcomes the world. Ah, hallelujah. Now you have the victory. Now you have the overcoming power. Now you have the conquer, conquering power that overcomes the world. Even the faith. Faith, Christ in me. I know that he is in me and that I am in him. I don't know it intellectually. I know it by a living revelation and reality of the presence of God now interacting with me and in, interacting with my spirit where the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with my spirit that I have had a divine event, that I have been born of God, that I am a son of God. I am a child of God having this wonderful grace of God of interacting with him. Uh, being governed by him. Ruled by him. Hallelujah. It's not a second work of grace. It's just the work of grace. So many people when they've justified their religious experience and so when they all of a sudden get proofs enough to find out, you know what, I don't have the right thing, then there's got to be another work so that they can feel good about what they had before. I say, wait with it. I say, oh God, let your floodlight of heaven shine upon my soul. Let there be transparency. Oh God, reveal to me, oh God, what's really going on in my life. I want to be proven. I want to be tried. And sin will come to try you and to prove you whether you're a God or not. John said, everyone who's born of God does not sin. Amen. That's pretty radical, ain't it? Huh? He keeps himself and the wicked one cannot access him. It's terrible to run around with demons living in your life. It's terrible. And then you enjoy them because you live in darkness. It's terrible. Controlling your life. Making Satan will give you his identity. He will. He will cause you to know that he lives and abides in you. And you will live after his lust and after his desires. What a terrible life. And he hates you. And his whole purpose is to destroy your soul in hell. When all the time you could have had the living God dwelling, living on the inside of you. Walking in you. God gives everybody an opportunity. I was talking about some situations the other day. I said, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I mean, there's nothing unnatural what I can do about it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the fire down. I'm going to call the fire down here tonight. I have a faith to call the fire of God down, and your life is going to explode. Your life will be messed up. If it's wood, stubble, and hay, it's going to be messed up. There's not going to be much left. If it's gold, you're going to shine bright. Huh? I'm going to call the fire down. Pretend's got to come to an end. Huh? Eleven has got to come to an end. I'm ready for God. I'm ready for God. I'm ready for deception. I'm ready for the lies. I'm ready for the falsehoods, the false judgments to be brought into the light so people can have a chance to recognize. My goodness. Good. Your eternal soul is at stake. Huh? You're not going to take a test when you go to heaven. It's not going to be a test. See how many questions you get right. And then if you get enough questions right and you make a... The C plus, <laughs> you get in. No. And I'm going to do it. The things that are important to men aren't important to God. No. They're not important to Him. The virtue of humility is not important to man, it's important to God. Very true. The virtue of brokenness is not important to men. It's actually, it's despised by men. It's very important to God, it's essential. Lowliness, despised by men, not important to men, despised by men, absolutely essential to God. Virtues, 
of purity, absolutely sense of God, holiness. Without it, you won't see Him. Right. Godliness, gentleness, kindness, being compassionate towards every, learning how to be compassionate. Growing up in the spirit to where you learn how to be compassionate. Huh? I tell you, Paul said that, that was more important than anything else. More important than all the gifts of the spirit. So learn how to be walking in this love. This goodness of God. Being genuinely concerned, interested in people. Not rushing through the day. On, on your quest for your own self-interest and promotion. Don't even see people in front of you. Just charging right into them. Get with, on, well, with only one intent to get to where you're going, no matter who you run over top of. Huh? Or you shove out the way. Are you listening to me? That's the ways of men. We don't want to, be, we don't want to live in that realm. We want, to live in a room, we want to live in a realm interacting with the Father. Amen. Read over here with me in 2 Corinthians. Forgive me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 12. And the scripture says that we've not received the spirit of the world. But we've received the spirit of God. We've received God's spirit. Spirit of the world is that which is behind everything that belongs to sin and iniquity. Everything that belongs to lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Spirit of the world is also called the spirit of disobedience. It's the will and the mind of Satan. And every demon spirit in allegiance with him under his domain. And the scripture says, we've not received that spirit. We don't have that spirit. Say, I don't have that spirit. Amen. God, I'm on good shalapaya. Hallelujah. But I have the Spirit of God. Because that is whoever has been born of the Spirit has God's Spirit. That's why Jesus said, That which is born of the Spirit, whosoever is born of the Spirit is Spirit. In other words, whosoever is born of the Spirit has the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I've received a new Spirit. It is the Spirit that belongs to the living God. So, so, so for what reason? So that I might know the things that are freely given of God so that I might be able to receive all these things that are coming down out of the realms of heaven so that I might be able to receive joy unspeakable. I might walk in this peace that I might walk into this faith that I might walk into all these wonderful divine virtues of the Father's own nature that I might receive healing that I might receive uh, the ability to be and do those things that are great exploits in God. To, to live in a heavenly realm. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a supernatural expression that causes me to interact with heaven. It is not just something that I do and it, it just... And that's about all it amounts to. And it doesn't bring a change. The bottom sticker mom today changes the very atmosphere. That's from heaven. It's not the sound of a tinkling cymbal. It's not the sound of a, a brass. It's not an aggravating sound. My goodness, please tell them to please, please be quiet. It's disturbing me. Huh? I'm over here in communion with the Holy Ghost and it's a dis aggravation. Hey, listen to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It excels and always brings the manifest presence of the Lord. It all, listen, I'm going to say it again. It excels and it always brings the manifest presence of the Lord. 
it always results in, the, in your life now being able to yield to a greater dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost, which I want to say is the manifestation of the presence of the Lord. And to everybody who's been born of God, born again, manifestation of the Spirit, the manifestation of the presence of God has been given to everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just excuse me while I go looking for the manifestation of the presence of God in your life. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something here tonight, dear people. We're here to help those of you who are willing to learn. We're here to help you grow and to be strengthened, to understand how to keep yourself in this realm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we understand all the assailing thoughts. We understand all the circumstances and the besetting situations that would come out against you. We understand that. But we understand something more important than all of that. And that God will give you a place to stand with them and walk with them. That those things won't even be able to phase you. Won't even be able to affect you. They become like white noise in the background. Huh? You'd have to try to listen really, really hard to hear anything there. It's true. Oh, God. Modesty out of money. God wants you to become people of the spirit. God creates you to become people of the mind. Whatever that looks like, the mind. Thinking. Thinking. Thoughts. God will make you people love the Spirit, full of power and authority and love, full of the glory of heaven, the excitement of what it means to be filled up with every good thing. I mean, last night I started dancing. I could have danced all night because it doesn't, it doesn't affect my strength realm. Daniel said he just like... He, 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 his whole body was shaking. He was playing the drums. I mean, he had blisters from playing the drums. We got after about two and a half hours last night. And he said, Dad, I'm telling you, I felt like I was going to just, I just had to just jump straight up and leap off of the place. Yeah, because why? That's the life of God. You begin to be moved by the life of God. You're going to run. You're going to jump. You're going to leap. You're going to move. Huh? Something's going to move. <laughs> yeah. Something's going to shout. It's more than you can. It's more. It's more emotion than you can contain. No emotion that you've ever experienced in the human realm. Happy emotion, sad emotion. Uh, it does no, no, no degree of passions. No, no degree of any attitude that you've ever experienced in life comes close, even slightly close to what I'm talking about when you're touched by heaven. That's where healing's at. Ha, huh. that's where faith and power and authority is at. So I said, oh, just a bunch of emotionalism. No, it isn't. It's being touched by God and he's reacting to a touch of God. That's what is life. It's life charging your body. And I'm telling you right now, when you learn how to get excited in his presence, in his presence, when you learn how to receive those things which the Spirit of the Lord is giving, showing us and freely given to us that has been freely given of the Father, giving us the capacity to receive them. You learn how to get excited and have a good time in the presence of the Lord. The, the things of this world won't be able to, won't, won't be able to touch you. Right. You have stepped over under the realm that overcomes the world. You will ride Monday. You'll wake up happy every morning, full of love. You won't need coffee. <laughs> you won't need coffee to feel the anointing. <laughs> I'm here talking to you tonight about what Papa wants to give you what has been made freely available in the gift of salvation <laughs> uh, I met a guy the other day and he said to me he said <clears throat> you know right out of the right out of the sh Right out of the chute, you know, and just like, he just walks right up to me and says, what's your goal? And I didn't know if he said goal or gold. 
for sure because he didn't talk very well. I said, what is my gold? You said gold? He said, gold. I said, well, I got many goals. He said, that's not what I expected you to say. I said, well, then what did you expect me to say? <laughs> oh, that you want Christ to be revealed in your life. I said, well, I already have that. He looks at me like, I said, that came to me as a free gift, salvation. I've been living in that since day one. And he, he stops for a second. First, he's going to think he had that reaction, you know, he had that look like, oh, you being all arrogant, you know. Who do you think you are? And then he goes, you're right. That is a free gift of salvation. <laughs> yeah. Bingo. It is. Yeah. The dots just connected. It's free gift of salvation. It came to me. Christ in me. Mine. Hallelujah. I have the day. The event took place. I come to that revelation, that knowledge, that intimacy, that walk with him when the Holy Spirit came into my life where I know that Father was in Christ Jesus and that Christ Jesus is in me and that I'm in him. Hallelujah. He's living in me, being revealed in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You need to have that day. You need to receive the free gift of salvation if you haven't received it. If you've received it and not learned how to yield to the things of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, but now after such a long time as this, let's get with the program. Let's go ahead, go ahead and get on in the heaven. And if you need to quit your job and go live in a cave and fast for 40 days to get it, then get with that program, get in your car right now and head for the hills. And don't come back till you get it. That's what I did. I headed for the hills and I didn't come back till it was real. Uh, and I didn't need nobody ruling over me and telling me, go out and talk to people about Jesus, go preach, go flow in the Holy Ghost. I didn't have, any, have anybody, need anybody to, to tell me those things because the anointing which I had received of him, the working and operation of the Spirit of God himself showed me and taught me how to abide in Christ Jesus, how to abide in him. Hallelujah. And the need any man to teach me that. The anointing itself. Teach, taught me everything in that, de that department. He wants to teach you that too. You don't, have to get, you, don't need, you don't have to go after the cares of this life. You don't have to get frustrated about your education. I have to remind students this all the time. Look, man, don't get wrapped up about the thing. Does the Lord have you there? Fine, do the best you can. Keep God first. Keep church first. Do the best you can, and don't worry about it. Don't get your emotions, don't get your self-interest, don't get your, you know, identity wrapped up in it, because that's nonsense. That's demonic. That's just demonic. You've just been ensnared by a subtle thing. Oh, look at me. I've got, look how smart I am. Look, we're not, we're not interested. How smart you are. And I'm getting you into heaven. It ain't going to teach you how to flow in the Holy Ghost. It ain't going to show you, it ain't, your smarts going to keep you going, it's going to, is diametrically opposed to the power of God. You're going to exalt yourself. And Father saying, you're not exalting yourself around me. Hmm? It's hard for somebody who thinks that they're really smart to really truly mean it when they say, I, know, I can do nothing. Huh? I know nothing of myself. Just joking. You understand? So really, out of reality of it is, you have to unlearn all that stuff. You have to say, wait a minute, man. What is that knowledge anyways? What is that knowledge really going to do for me? Oh, God help us. I want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is going to say. There's a knowledge that comes down from heaven that I'm more interested in than the knowledge. I mean, I listen. I'm very appreciative of Kevin's computer knowledge. It helps with the difficult situations. Huh? There's some practical things that we sh truly need him to fix. But we're, walk we're happy that he's not walking around with a head that looks like a computer screen. <laughs> we, 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 we were certainly blessed that his identity isn't wrapped up in that. But some people get their identity wrapped up and their head looks like a computer screen. <laughs> 
and they, 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 understand, the, they, they, uh, they understand the whole of life and the world in computer language. How, how hard is it going to be for a person like that to receive from the Spirit of the Lord? Because they've exalted other things as valuable and as, as maybe not more important, but somewhere close to as important. Because they come to rely upon those things for their daily bread. They come to rely upon those things for their provision in life to take care of them. Now they've made man their trust and didn't even know it. They fell into a snare. Now what are you going to do with yourself? You have to, you're going to have to, have a, you have to come into a move of the Spirit, have revival so the stronghold gets broken off of you so that you can move on now in a relationship with the Lord, making the things of the Spirit more important. I would, rather, I would rather just know the things that the Holy Ghost would teach me about how to deal with a person who's demon-possessed, how to deal with a person who's sick and tormented and afflicted, how to deal with a person about their salvation, how to flow and, uh, and function and cooperate with the anointing of the Holy Ghost so Holy Ghost conviction strikes the heart of a person that I'm talking to so that their life is transformed, that I would to know all the knowledge in the world. But we're not careful. It's very subtle. The, all the knowledge of the world begins to become valuable to us and all that we can do with our own hands and all that we can supply for ourselves becomes our mainstay. Yeah. Yeah, because it's taking care of me. It's my comfort. I need somebody to take care of me. My money's going to take care of me. My job's going to take care of me. My knowledge is going to take care of me. We don't even realize it. Mm. We don't even realize it. Until Jesus walks up and says, you want to come into the kingdom? Take everything you have and give it to the poor. That's right. Everything. Because it's going to stop you from coming. Mm -hmm. It's one of the challenges that we have in the United States of America. And Father in His mercy is going to do something by His grace so that more people will be able to step out of their the trust that they have in the arm of flesh. Israel did the same thing. They came and they sit before the Lord as the people of the Lord. Their speech was as those who love the Lord, but their heart was far from them. I mean, if you would have evaluated them, you would have said they were really good people. You would have said, my, they're really holy people. Wow, they're really religious and devoted and committed people. And the Lord said, your heart's far from me, man. Your affections aren't with me. Your emotions, your desires, your passions aren't with me. Your trust and your confidence is not in me. He said, what you can do. Subtle things will keep us from the great things that God has for us. Little things that... that Maybe does, well, they're not little. Actually, they're major things, but we aren't able, we're, we're not able to discern. We're not able to see the evil of it. We're not able to see that we turned it into an idol and turned it into a God and made it something that is important to us on the same standing as the Lord is. I mean, I, I have people all the time basically telling me things right out of their mouth. They can't even hear it. And the Lord won't even let me tell them, hey, you know what you just said? What you just said, what just came out of your mouth, which was in your heart, you just testified that your trust is in yourself. Your trust is in your money. Your trust is in your job. Your trust is in your career and what you're developing and making for your future. But Because only the Holy Ghost can reveal it to people who are hungry to hear who are hungry to know him. And that, that's a dynamic where all of a sudden we're, we're dealing with these things. We're recognizing, wait a minute, Father has all of this for us. He has all this glory realm for us to live in. He's got all these holy emotions for us to live in. He's got all this overcoming power for us to live in. He's got all this joy unspeakable for us to live in. He's got all this divine nature for us to live in. He's got all this realm of, 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 of grace and provision and health and strength and divine power to live in. What's wrong? Why am I not living in it? What, what's wrong? Why am I not living in it? That's a tough question for people to ask. People want to deceive themselves. They're happy deceiving themselves. 
And that, you know, oh, I got it. I, I have it by faith. You're like the kid that mama said, go clean your room. You say, I, well, I speak and span by faith, and I don't want to touch it and yield to doubt. <laughs> None. And then all that child needs is a spanking. Get in there and clean that room right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens is when we begin to look into the wonderful law of life and law of liberty, and we see all these things are made available to us, and then we, we, don't, we are not realizing them in our life, then if we're honest and sincere, we're going to start crying out to God. Amen. And when we begin to cry out to God, and we begin to get earnest about having the things that God said supposed to be in our lives, well, they're going to be in our lives then. That's right. David said that he esteemed the will of the Father, the things of the kingdom, more important than his necessary food. Mm -hmm. Of course, Job was Job said that. But it's the heart of the, it's the, heart of the redeemed. It's the heart of the person who knows the Lord. The most important thing to the man, King David, who had all the wealth, had all the riches, had all the, the things that you could possibly want in life, said, there's one thing I desired, just to be in the house of the Lord, to behold his glory in his sanctuary. Well, you're going to have to have, you're going to have, something's going to happen to you. You're going to have to be born of the Spirit. The living presence of God is going to have to be, begin to master your your life once you're born of the Spirit. Now that you've been born of the Spirit and the Holy Ghost is now allowed to master your life, He's going to show you how to enter into this realm of glory, but you've got to be willing to participate. You've got to be willing to follow Him. Now, let's look at some of that. Let's go, to, let's go, over, to, let's go over to Jude now, chapter 1, verse 18. Let's look at some of this. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is what I do. It's not, oh, that's a nice word. No, now, okay, fine, we're done with that. Now it's time to go to work. No, 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 no. No, we're not done with this. We're never going to be done with this. It's a part of every moment of our life from this time on. I found how to touch heaven first thing in the morning that lasts all day. And constantly was pulling me back into that realm of living in the, under the, uh, the grace and mantle of the Holy Ghost that I might have the demeanor, action, disposition, faith, working of divine power and grace in my life. And if I slipped out of it, I'd get back into it in, 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 in short order in the next five minutes. And, of course, if you're around here, you're supposed to be back in in the next 30 seconds. Why don't you catch yourself slipping out, being overwhelmed with the circumstances, frustrating situations, huh? That everybody has to face on a daily basis. You don't want to live in that. You don't want to live in that. Raise your hand if you want to live in frustration, fear, yeah. torment. Raise your hand. Okay, good. Just want to check, see if anybody needed deliverance. We all agree that none of us want to live in that. So now we're just going to receive what Papa's freely given. We're going to have it. You ready? Jude 18. You looking at it? Jude 18. I'll start at verse 17. But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. And who are they mocking? they mocking God, and they mocking the people of God. they mocking especially the moving of the Spirit. they mocking us jumping around, dancing, rejoicing in the presence of the Lord, being overwhelmed by the power of God. And just, it's not emotionalism. It's being touched by the power of God, and you can't, you can't contain yourself. And I want every one of you to understand what that's like. People didn't, people, you know, read about how that 
Smith Wigglesworth wake up in the morning, start getting in prayer meetings, start dancing around in his bed, dancing around the outside of his bed and shouting praise God. So they went and tried to do it religiously. So they could see if they could get the same faith results that he had in signs and wonders and miracles. No, no, no. You got to get the same relationship he had. It was the touch and the power of God moving on him. As soon as he woke up and he touched heaven, heaven touched him. And the power of God caused him to leap. It wasn't some little religious dance, you know, some little ritualistic woo, 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 dance. Then all of a sudden you kind of conjure up some spirit to make something happen. It's the power of God striking you. And, and taking hold of you and overwhelming you with joy and with gladness. People, there's so few people I believe today that even have any understanding about what I'm talking about right now. A place where you're not just living in some little sad sing-along song about how you love God someday. <laughs> Are you listening to me? It's the shouts of joy and rejoicing that fill your heart and floods of joy come gushing out of you like rivers of living water because the power of heaven touches your soul because you understand and access into the realms of glory that are ministered by the Holy Ghost because you've been born of the Spirit and He now is able to show you all those things that are freely given to us by God. And if you don't have that, you need to get right with God. Get rid of the leaven and you'll have some heaven. Or perhaps you've been born again, but there's leaven in your life. The leaven of false doctrine and the leaven of sin. Both keep you from heaven. Both will grieve the Holy Ghost. Both will give Satan permission to block your access. Don't delay anymore. Don't wait anymore. Get, get serious with God. Mean business with God. Determine, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to just go on thinking it's God's department and whenever he wills and wants to, then I'm going to have it. And you know, that's just for some special revival meeting once a year. No, it's not, that's religious. This is life and more, life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are young in the Lord, I'm talking, maybe I'm talking a little bit more on a mature level. But I want you to know you can get there quick. I, there's, I just don't want you sitting around here the next 10 years and still just looking at me. <laughs> thinking. <laughs> but the biggest movement most people get in the kingdom of God is maybe a little bit of this. That's not much touch. I pray God, fire, God touches you. Holy emotions begin to be stirred in yeah. you. And the power of God surges to yes. your life. Yeah. You go leaping yeah. and, and rejoicing and dancing and shouting because you can't be contained. Hallelujah. Because it can't be contained. Heaven touches you, that's what's going to happen to you. That's what's going to happen. It's reproducible. It happens... The same happens to the people in the Arctic, in the Antarctic, in the jungle, and in the city. Everybody has the same exact experience. The power of God touches you, react the same way. Are you with me here in Jude? Yes. Yes. Remember what the, the disciples, apostles of our Lord Jesus said, how that they told you there'd be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own, godly, own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. They aren't going to hang out with the apostles. They're, going to hang out. They're not hanging out with Jude, who's talking about contending for the faith that was once to live under the saints. They're not hanging out with John, who's talking about living in this purity, living in this righteousness, knowing, knowing this love of God, knowing that you know that you've been born of him, that you have this witness of him. They're not going to hang out with, 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 with Paul, who's going to have Holy Ghost meetings that last all night. They're going to separate themselves. Stay because they're sensual, having not the spirit. Now, what I'm going to tell you is this. Now, because we are now, we have advanced in the state of apostasy. Now, the, the bigger churches, the more, that which is more acceptable are the sensual. And those having the spirit are the minority. Before it was 
First it was the church that, had the, that was baptized in the Holy Ghost, having the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And then these people who were sensual, walking after their own ungodly lust, separated themselves to go do whatever it is that they want to do because they didn't have to walk in, they didn't want to walk in that kind of consecration. They didn't want to walk in that kind of heavenly realm. They want to walk in that kind of isolation from demonic influence. So they went away. Now it's changed. The tables are turned. Now the great popular places are to go where people are walking in ungodly lust and then, and then condoning everybody else who walks in ungodly lust. And it's all sensual. It is all belonging to a fleshly realm. And some people want to use the word soulish. And I understand why they want to use it, but it's not a biblical term. Fleshly is. I understand why they want to use it because it, it, it is a way to try to describe that which the self generates because the, the self can generate happy and, you know, you listen to a comedian and you get a little giddy, a little happy or you can, self can generate a sadness and all, oh, that sad song made you feel sad and you cried a few little tears <laughs> and just so happened to have Jesus in it. You thought that was the anointing, not the anointing. It's, it's, it's a self realm. It's fleshly. It's sensual. She's got a feel-good thing to it. It has nothing to do with the anointing. The power of God is so different from that. Hallelujah. It's a glory realm that is, un, is immeasurable. It's undescribable. It's undefinable. It's undefinable. You can't define it. Now look what Jesus says. Here's the remedy. You ready? He says, but you, that's what they are. Okay? They mockers, they walking after the ungodly lust, sensual, having not the spirit, but you, my beloved, you build up yourself now over here. Look at this. Build up yourself in your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost. Mandala mangida mena munda la mandala mangiga la mangada bolo mangala mangida pake namo lo lo mungja male de mende bena de magen lo mungja bagele minge bakle bado madek jo boko bakida makata balanam. I'm staying with it till glory strikes my soul. Biyata boshala makata ina ma papa na first thing in the morning. Huh? I'm telling you right now, you do that before you go in and talk to the boss. I mean, if you do it until glory comes, till heaven comes to us, a tangible peace, you're overwhelmed. You write, you, 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 you classify drunk in the Holy Ghost, but you're well put together. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's indescribable, it's undefinable. And, 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 and he might have been thinking to give you a, promo, a, a raise, I mean, forgive me, a demotion, but he's going to give you a raise. He might have been thinking about taking some money away from you, but he's going to promote you, kind of thing. Because there'll be favor on you. You walk in there with divine power and grace. Take out the fear. Take you over into the realms of joy. Take you out of sickness. Take you over into, over into being healthy and whole and 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 and. and, and Feeling good. Bring on the manifest presence of the living God. Your faith will be strengthened to where you'll stand up and you'll speak to the storms of light. You'll speak to the powers of darkness. You'll speak to every opposing situation and it will obey you. And the beautiful thing about it is You'll find yourself being kept in a realm called the love of God. And he that dwells in love dwells in God. And in this place of knowing the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, we're filled with all the fullness of God. And walking in this love is one of the dimensions by which John said earlier, hereby we know that we are of the truth. Hereby we know that he is in us and we are in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cabrambo, Gana, Manje, Gano, Gani, Gata, Badisha, Lopotaya. 
can't be something that is just a religious little thing that you do because you think that it's spiritual. It is a place of allowing the power of the Holy Ghost to take control of the situation of your life, the state of your life, to take control and mastery of what you feel and what you think and, and, and what you're going to do to take, give you the ability and the strength to do it, not dysfunctionally. And anything you do after a human ability is dysfunctional. I like that. As far as I'm concerned, everybody's dysfunctional. <laughs> huh? The only person that's not dysfunctional is those that have the Spirit and do it by the Holy Ghost. Because that's functional. Amen. That's my definition of functional. Everything else is dysfunctional. And so, then let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at another place. You want to learn how to grow and mature in this realm. How, do you want to walk in the nature of Jesus Christ? Do you want to behave yourself after the will and the mind of the Father? That you're going to have to give place to the Holy Spirit to in every way take the lead in everything that you feel, in everything that you think, in everything that's going on in the dimensions of the way that you live out your life. He wants to master you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to teach you how to act right. He wants to teach you how to talk right. Huh? He wants to show you how to live your life out in a realm of servitude and love and humility and grace and boldness and confidence and assurance and faith. Let's teach you how to live in heaven. So let's go look. Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll just go ahead and start verse 18 there, too, because that's a pretty good place to start. Probably ought to back up a little bit more, but hereby we know that we are the truth, and sh hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. We know that he dwells in us by the Holy Spirit, which he's given unto us. It is by the Holy Ghost and the working of the Holy Ghost in our life that we're able to freely receive all those things from heaven. And unless you're receiving all these things from heaven, there ain't no way you're going to stand against the powers of darkness that are going to take you out. Mm -hmm. True. They're going to take you out. One way or the other, it doesn't matter to them. Whether they use strife or immorality, they're going to take you out. Whether they use evil speaking, murmuring and complaining, or whether they use full-on outright immorality in your life of some sort. Hatred, whatever. So Ephesians chapter 5, just look with me here quickly. Start at verse four, 14. Awake thou that sleepest. It's very good right now. It's very, in the context of some of what I see going on. <laughs> Arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See that you walk correctly, not as fools, ouch, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understanding what is the will of the Lord. Don't be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. If there's anything that you and I want to do, is it is to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. But the only way you're going to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit is to be filled with the Spirit. The only way that you're going to ever continue to increase in this realm of those things which Father's purpose for our life 
those things that he's commissioned us to do. God didn't give us this new life to get promoted at the workplace. He didn't. He didn't, he, we weren't born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost to get a better job. We weren't anointed of God to have a nicer house. We were given all of these things to do the works of Jesus. To live a heavenly life. Get rid of the leaven. And you'll have heaven. Amen. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you to send your fire. There is no way that people are going to see the reality of what's going on in their life without the fire of your presence, without the working of your mighty, glorious, manifest power. And so, he says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, I know some of you cannot sing at all. <laughs> it is uninspiring. But that's okay. Get with the program. Because the Lord, the Lord will take care of that. You just need to practice more. At home alone. <laughs> Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in songs. <sighs> Somebody said, I want to learn how to prophesy. Easy. Just get over here in this realm of where you're worshiping God. Be caught away in praising and worshiping Him. And then out of the abundance of that realm of working of the Holy Ghost, you begin to lift up your voice and you begin to declare those things which are in the Word of God and which are the will of God. Just crying out to Him in prayer, making petition. And the next thing you know, prophecy just come busting up out of you too. Here in this prophetic song, Amen. the psalm, prophetic song, the hymn. Mm -hmm. A dear friend of mine recently said, hymn captures the moves of God. It's true. I really, that really spoke to me. Capturing those moves of God in your life. We sang a song tonight which captures the move of God. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated Lord to thee. It's the holiness movement of the 1800s. The late 1800s. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's the song in the language of heaven. Giving thanks. Now, tonight, dear people, we're just going to have to just come to terms with the reality that not everybody's doing that in here. And that needs to change. That needs to change. Because if you're not living after this realm of being filled with the Spirit, you're living after the realm of yourself. And that's just opposite of what Jesus told you to do. He said you're supposed to daily deny yourself. You're not supposed to live in the self realm. He said, he said you're supposed to deny yourself. You're supposed to take up your cross and follow Him. In other words, you're not supposed to live for yourself. You're supposed to live to do the will of the Father. It's the will of the Father that you be filled with the Spirit. And, 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 and what's going to happen is he's going to show you how e he's going to help you understand how easy it is to access joy, how easy it is to access peace, how easy it is to access love, how easy it is to access, access faith, how easy it is to access the realms of divine power. <laughs> and then in that place you're going to grow and you're going to mature and all of a sudden you're going to be standing around in the presence of the Lord at home, hit with the power of God running around the house. <laughs> Huh? Shouting for joy. And then all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself that much more receptive to the moving of the Spirit when you're in the house. Because I'm going to tell you, I've watched many of you in this place here tonight sitting and not moving 
when the power and presence of the Lord was rocking the, rocking the house and you were untouchable by the Holy Ghost. He couldn't access you. There, were, there was no connectivity between you and Him. You don't want that in your life. Huh? You want to get to the place that if you see the smallest little moving of the Spirit, you dive in head first. <laughs> if you see a little puddle of the Holy Ghost, you do a swan dive. <laughs> you have to sit back and wait till, I mean, my goodness. Because I, 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 I believe that in that state and disposition, if Jesus appears in the place, all you're going to do is faint. You're just going to pass out from fear. <laughs> because you have no ability to connect with him in the realms of the spirit. And all you're going to do is connect in the realms of the natural. And you're going to be freaked out of your mind and you're going to pass out. You're just going to faint. You know, <laughs> just collapse, collapse from being scared. <laughs> So just a couple of people can hook up with that. I want every one of you to be able to hook up with it. See, it explodes something in your spirit. I, it's being spoken to explode something in your spirit. But if you're tired and you're weary and you're upset and things aren't going right, you got something different to do with your life, you're disappointed with yourself. And <laughs> it's a prison. It's a prison. Hong, the king, the cop, the dambra, the ekadesh, It's a faint sound of something good far, far away. Father, pray now in the name of Jesus for the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus for your fire of the Holy Ghost to fall upon every person here in this place. Father, there needs to be a people that are called by your name who are yielded to your presence and yielded to your spirit. And Father God, we pray that right here in this place you will find such a company of saints. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven. Lambro Zadav remain and beg list of Berdor Dust. Lambre Becande Lemende Patora Maya. Arra Bakista Dalalana Mande Peeta. Arra Pa, receive. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. Soko Ramangala Sadara Mambapa. Receive Mamanglanga. Be filled with the Spirit, Mamande Beri. Be filled, Mamanglisha Peronai. Be filled, Mamanglisha. Be filled. Be filled, my mongs a day or a steep time. Be filled, my mongolish to peril number day. Be filled, my mongolish to peril nine. Be filled, my mongolish to bear a nine today. Be filled, my mongolish to bear a nine. 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 Be filled, Malalananda Bere, Malalambre Bebe, Gora Shara Menglis, the Bere Bella Lomba Dora, the Betis Shataki Rebe, Mandam Romande, Nerebe Bebe Bene Batu, Nerebe Bebe Raman, you love Gorose, Rebecca Rustar Bengale, Menambra Bosonde, in the Mingle Kutaya, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and Mande Bredus de Brengetaya. Hallelujah. Everybody, I want you to stand with me. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. 
Mandala, just lift your hands towards heaven. Just yield yourself. The Father, God wants to touch you right now. The power of the Holy Ghost wants to overwhelm you. Let God touch you. Let God feel you. In the name of Jesus. In the manjolo bohri. Hallelujah. Braya sade kaya loka. Bera manon. Bere mamonon bade. Now, now in Jesus' name. Bongjele kedi time. Ye kuru stara manga libre day. Jere stora namara nengara namanda lede bedu de la hita. Now I don't want you to stop. I don't want you to stop until something begins to happen in your life. Don't stop unless you may have to be here till three o'clock in the morning. But some of you, but don't stop till something starts to change. Don't stop until the power of God begins to move upon your heart, begins to be expressed through your life. Go, soto rimama mande bere, soti na nanga rebebe du shalaraba. Come on now. Come on now. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Remando remande the change, 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 the change in Jesus. The change comes in Jesus' name. The change. 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 Right now. The change. The change. The change. Father, we cry out for the change. 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 I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Listen to me. But you, brethren, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Because what's going to happen is the manifest presence of God is going to result in you being saturated, overwhelmed, filled with the love. I want to say this again. Don't be unwise, but wise. Don't be a fool but be wise. Redeeming the times for the day is evil. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I can see some of you, you under the, you under the influence of being tired, some of you. Well, then break through it. Get serious enough. Get serious enough that you break through it. Because I'm looking at a lot of people that you know, I want everybody to participate. You could say, I could say, well, you know, I'm just going to be happy with, with 75% of the people participating and just going to let the 25% just do whatever they want to do. I just can't do that. 
Not tonight. I have to do that maybe on Wednesday night. <laughs> but I can't do that tonight. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost until the... Listen, I want you to, I want you to do something. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and you stand there and you pray in the Holy Ghost until the atmosphere of your life begins to change, until the sickness and the disease goes out of your body, until the weariness and the tiredness leaves. Till the love of God begins to be over, overwhelm you, till the song comes, till the praise comes. I'm telling you, you that God has this realm for you tonight. Should you leave here tonight having once again another missed opportunity? I'm not going to stand by and watch as Satan afflicts God's people and oppresses them like a foreign army ruling over the house of God. I see five, six, seven, eight people right now plugged in, caught away. The rest of you are just thinking about it. You have to decide at what point in time are you going to stop thinking about it and just go there. You could listen to everything I just said caught away in the glory instead of trying to process it with your head. Dear people, we want to help you. We want to empower you. It's my job to equip you. It's my job to, in, my, it's my job to perfect those things that are concerning you, to show you, to say, here is the place to be. Come over here. And you can say, I can't do it. I'm telling you tonight that God wants to do it and that there is a position and a posture that you need to be in so that he can do what he wants to do. And that posture looks pretty much something like that right there. Right there. Father, I thank you right now for that wonderful work of grace that strikes the hearts of every person in this place. That no single soul will hold anything back from you. That every single heart would come before you right now. If there's anything that's going on in their life that's not right, they'll repent of it. If there's anything that they're holding on to that is a bad attitude, wrong attitude, something that belongs to a realm of ungodliness, immorality, they will forsake it and turn from it. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that there will be every heart in this place committed and surrendered and submitted to you. Right now, in Jesus' name. Let this realm of glory fill your soul. I know a place where you live the overcoming life. It's where you're filled up with divine power that comes from interacting with this presence. He freely gives these rivers. He freely gives this refreshing. It's yours tonight. and You're going to take hold of it. It's going to happen in this place. Your glory now, Lord. Your glory now. Everybody, just I want you to come up here. Just come up here and find a place to, to kneel before the Lord. Just come kneel before the presence of the Lord. Come find a place. Come find a place. 
Last Sunday night, when the Spirit of the Lord called for everyone who was hungry, I was just so blessed to see everybody come. Everyone is hungry for the things of the Spirit. Tonight is a night to get everything right. To get every dimension of your heart and your life yielded to the Spirit of the Lord. So that Father can begin to show us all the things that are absolutely essential if we're going to be used by Him and make a difference and be a witness. If there's going to be a change, religion is not going to get the job done. More good preaching, as it were, is not going to get the job done. More intellect's not going to get the job done, but a flowing forth of the power of the Holy Ghost through your life yes. is going to change everything. Yes. Yes. Right now, you begin to lift up your voice. Just begin to worship Him. Just begin to yield to Him. Just begin to consecrate your life to Him right now. Let Father take a full control. Let Him have every dimension of our lives. Lord God, we thank You that anything that needs to be washed away from our lives, oh God, we're desperate about it tonight. Lord, that every sin, every stain of sin, every wrong attitude, every wrong thing that has been allowed in, the, in anyone's life here tonight, it comes to an end in Jesus' name. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. Right now, if there's unforgiveness in your heart, you let it go. Right now. Right now, if there's anything that is going on in your life that is unholy, you renounce it right now. Right now, renounce it. Father, your glory now. Hallelujah. Ah, your glory now, Lord. Father, your mercy now. Father, your mercy now. Father, your mercy now, Lord. Father, your glory now. Ah. Yes, just let that glory of heaven flow out of your innermost being. Let those tongues of fire issue forth from your life. Let the prayer and the intercession of the Holy Ghost change everything about your disposition. Right now, the sin has got to go that the Holy Spirit's power can flow. The sin has got to go if the power of the Holy Ghost is going to flow. The unbelief has got to go. The doubt has got to go. The doubt and unbelief has got to go if the Holy Spirit's going to flow, if the power of God's going to flow. <laughs> Lift up your voice with me. Lift up your voice with me. Lift 
up your voice. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands, lift your voice. Lift your hands, lift your voice. So Right out of your belly. <laughs> Let that wonderful rivers of the glory of the Holy Ghost flow. Let that flow come. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled. Mamam ramangeri, mamam dala vakiri, mamam dala vana manjar, nembe breve be. Gurra mamam nam breve, gurra mamam bava, nembe leve breve kita breve sotre. Zere baba ri mamam ramangeli, nembe dora mamam breve bari mene. All the change comes right where the Holy Ghost is allowed free course. There's no change without the flowing forth. Of these rivers, there is no change without that wonderful flow. the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the realm. So kura ma 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 de re be 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 gamba la ba la 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 Surra ba ba ba, surra ba ba la ba ba la ba ba la ba la ba 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 Hallelujah. 
Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, strengthen every person here right now. Strengthen every person in this place. Strengthen them by your spirit and their inner being that that wonderful, glorious realm of heaven might flow continually. Might flow continually. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Be strengthened right now. Hallelujah. Be strengthened right now by the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Be streak that! Be streak that! Be streak that! Be streak that right now by the Spirit in your inner being right now. Jesus, right now in Jesus' name. 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 Now I want to I want to say this. I want to say this. The manifest power of God that was here this past Sunday night. There is absolutely no reason why every single person shouldn't live in that glory. And you know, listen, I'm going to say this once again. Last Sunday night was such an amazing blessing to me to see every one of you respond to a call for more hunger for the things of the kingdom of God. I know every one of you, 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 you're just laboring tirelessly. You're laboring in the ministry here for the children's ministry it's, as, as it's being developed. You're laboring every, continually in the street ministries. You're laboring in the things of getting the, the other building ready. There's a lot going on. But there's no reason for you not to continually stay in that wonderful manifest presence of the Lord. And I tell you tonight that that manifest presence of Jesus that was here last Sunday night in such a wonderful way because everybody was responding. It's here right now. And in one of the most important things in responding to the work of grace is just to feel his love and acceptance. Once you, have, once you have dealt with any sin and any wrongdoing, it's, 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 just, it's, it's instantly taken care of and you begin to feel this acceptance. You cannot enter in feeling rejected or isolated or shut out. You cannot. So right now you just feel accepted in the beloved because I'm telling you, you are. I'm telling you, you are. I'm telling, I'm telling you, like I said, I, like I said last Sunday night, now this is the body place. 
And I, I, gear, I, I want you to understand something. There is a work of God that Father has been preparing us for that we will step into. There have been seasons in God that it seemed like that everything that was going to just break open and the whole region would be saved. But it's just all been getting things developed, getting ready. Don't be discouraged. Be confident, be bold, but I want you to grab a hold of something tonight that you have to realize. A sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that needs to be developed. We're going after a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost that needs to be developed. The more sensitive that I've let the Lord make me to the Holy Spirit, the more I've been able to receive from heaven the good things of heaven and to walk with Father and do the things that he's called me to do. And he gave me that so that I could give it to you. And what he taught me, I'm teaching you tonight. So I just want you to be accepted. I want you to, I want you to, just, I, want a moment of I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost until your, the, the atmosphere of your life, till the tiredness goes, till the fatigue goes, till the problem goes. And then if you don't have any fatigue or tiredness or problem, just come pray in the Holy Ghost until the, the overwhelming presence of Jesus strikes your soul even in a greater way. Because I tell you, He's here. I tell you, His glory is here. I tell you, His power is here. I tell you, signs and wonders here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we consecrate our lives to you. To live fully for you. Oh. To live completely under your charge, oh God. To do thy will, oh God. To live for thy charge, oh Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the working of your mighty power here in this place among your people, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for great changes. Thank you, Father, for great maturity. Thank you, Father, for great boldness in the faith. Thank you, Father, for 
sensitivity to you, Lord. Lord, we worship and we praise you. If any of if any of if any of you want prayer, just stand up on, on stand up where you're at, and I'll just come to you and pray for you. Any of you that want prayer, stand up where you're at. I'll come pray for you. Because you're not leaving here sick tonight. You're not leaving here hurting tonight. You're not leaving here discouraged tonight. You're going out of here bold in the faith, full of great confidence in God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I tell you, the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost has never, ever been this strong in this place. What God's been doing over the past six months, I want everybody to be a part of it because I'm telling you, things that God is, God is shaping things right now for a great outpouring of His Spirit. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I will convince you this. This is ground zero. I've heard it out of heaven.
Now that pain goes out of your body right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, yes. Now you live in that now, Jason, Jason of God. Jesus name. Father, I thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the fire of your presence right here. Sikaram Mandele Kina Jesha. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire the Holy Ghost. Right out of your belly flows. Right out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. Francesca, just receive right now. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. And just, just let the joy of the Lord bubble up out of your belly. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. That's it, change. Father, thank you for the anointing upon Kate's life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A fire anointing. Fire anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now it's time for that joy come bubble up out of your belly. Time with Mung Lang Jorus. Nam Blind Day. Rambo Sterine. Baras Dai. Mala Sunday. Rebokai, Brombara Sterebe. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive. 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 Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' happy. 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 No more sad. Happy. Happy. Just receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just receive the goodness of his presence. There's goodness. There's a goodness in his presence. There's not a sadness in his presence. People don't need to run around and grieve and sorrow. Repentance is, and mercy is too easy. Okay, now it's time to get happy. Okay, hold up, hold up. Who's been spreading the travail around? (laughs) 
No spread and travail. <laughs> Happy. Somebody said, I have the burden of the Lord. <laughs> the Lord doesn't have a burden. <laughs> He's got a rest. He says, come unto me, all ye that are... Weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Tonight, tonight, change comes. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, right now, at this moment in time. Those of you who haven't had strength, you're going to have strength. Babies need to be healed. Is everybody healthy here in this house? They're healthy. They just want to be touched. Lord Jesus, I thank you for filling faith up right now with the glory. And for filling Judah up too. You just do that all the time. Just do that more and more. Paul said, I pray in the Holy Ghost more than you all. I think that everybody needs to start following Paul as he followed Jesus. I'm interested in praying in the Holy Ghost more than you all. I have found a realm that I'm certain everybody wants to know about. And all I did was obey God and began to build myself up in my holy, my, in my in most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. All I did was continue to give myself to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. And so now I commission you to do the same in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Strengthen in your inner being, Chrissy, to flow and function in the power of the living God. Father, I ask you to take Carlos and baptize him, oh God. <laughs> baptize him in your presence. Overwhelm him with your glory. Stoke them, David, they say. Supercharge them, oh God. <laughs> With divine power. Just lift your hands towards heaven, Carlos. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Ra-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
Thank you, Jesus. So, thy in the extra long bambrus the prat in the mechlos. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God, for this work of grace right there in Carlos' holy place. <laughs> I tell you, all the pain goes out of your body. Faith comes and overwhelms your soul. In Jesus' name. Dear people, if there's anything that you want to do together, that is to stand alongside one another, encourage one another, and provoke one another to good works. I mean, we're standing, we standing in a place here in this city that as far as I know, no one else is standing here in this realm. We're, we're, we're taking up a battle against everything they would try to shut down the moving of the Holy Ghost, and we're not going to be moved. Amen. And Father, look, I'm not, well, I'm not going to acquiesce to any kind of religious notion. I'm not backing up. I'm moving forward. Amen. And God's going to show you how to throw down and defeat everything that would try to stop you because you think you can stand in this place where God is preparing folks to begin to move in the great exploits that will absolutely pull down, bring down the strongholds of Satan, and then he's gonna, it's going to happen without a certain amount of resistance? Sure, there's going to be resistance. But we have a realm and a place that we can live in where the resistance can impact us or affect us. Watch what takes place. Watch what takes place. Watch what takes place. Look, I know that, listen to me, I know the things that the Lord has been giving me over this past month, this, just the past month. I've never experienced the presence of the Lord in my own personal life as I have over the past month. And I know that He gives it to me so I can give it out. And all we're doing is getting everybody just in expectation to receive. Now, I know, that, I know that there's been little pockets of problems. I know there's been some little pockets of problems. You two girls have had some problems. There's been little pockets of problems. I want, you to, I want you to look around, and I want you to find people around you that need some help. I want, I want people to start pairing up and start watching out for a folks' soul. Okay? You, you, are you listening to me? I want you to both to stand up. I want you to listen. What's going on has nothing to do with anything other than harassing, tormenting demon spirits. And, and who's, who's, who's hooking up with these girls? Who's hooking up with them that is not an alternative to their mother's age? I mean, I praise, that you, praise God that you guys want to do that. That's good. But who's hooking up with these girls that are closer to their age? Huh? You are? Well, that's good. Come stand up here by her. Because I'm telling you, dear people, when there's, when there's problems and there's issues going on, if people who are strong in the Lord who know how to pray for folks will come around them and help them, a change can come that may otherwise not come. So, Charity, who is it that you have... No one really close to your age. I think that there's probably, well, there's nothing more important, and I know that everybody's very, very busy, but there's nothing more important than taking care of the spiritual needs of the young people and people just, well, people of all ages, just pairing up with folks 
to just take interest in them, to pour into them, to help them. How many people do you have right now? You just have Katie? But Father, we need somebody for charity. Because we, we're going to have to recognize that we have to watch out after other people's souls. Father, we ask you now in Jesus' name to shut down this power of Satan that is a, that's come out against some of the young girls in this church. They would try to separate them from knowing the glory and the beauty and the splendor of what it means to live as your people. Father, I thank you that from this day forward, Katie and Charity are going to know you in a way that they've never known you before. That your glory and your power and the manifest presence of heaven is going to be upon their life. And they're going to burn with your fire. They're going to burn with your purpose. Father, that they take their place in the kingdom of God and begin to stand mighty in you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the anointing. Annika, are you going to be willing to stand alongside Jerry, Jerry and help her? That's yeah. good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want you to lay hands on her right now. <laughs> Yes. Run. Yes. Yes. Nothing will hold you back anymore. Nothing. Nothing. Yes. 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 Mighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to encourage all of you to look to look around you and see people that are younger than you and the Lord that need encouragement. I want you to go pray with them, spend time with them, help them, encourage them, watch out for their soul. In doing that, you're going, you, yourself, you yourself are going to find an increase in the anointing manifest presence of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Annika, you just put your arm around Charity and you just help her. And Angelica, you just put your arm around Katie and you help her. And Who's that? Who else has been having some challenges and you just need some help? You just need, some, need somebody just to... And, and Pastor Daniel, what we're going to have to do is we're just really going to have to understand how to more effectively help different age groups be responsible for the age group just underneath them. All the way up. How to find that time to pray together and, and minister the things of the Spirit together and encourage one another and prophesy over one another and lay hands on one another. Huh? Father, I pray for this breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. I ask you to give us wisdom to sort this out. Father, we ask you to give us wisdom and insight to sort this out. That everybody in this place moves to the same spirit, moves to the same anointing, moves to the same purpose. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. I'm feeling better about that situation there. <laughs> there is more, I think, more measurable wickedness and immorality going on in the culture of elementary school right now than has ever been reported in the history of men. Because instead of texting, it's sexting. In elementary school, it's a popular common thing. Most people have no comprehension of what elementary kids school, school, school kids are going through. Most people have no understanding of how Satan is running right over top of everything. And yet, listen to me. Huh? And what I see is I see a consecration in this church that doesn't exist anywhere else. Because what I've looked around and I've seen, I've seen a bunch of people captivated by pornography. They're taken out by those demon spirits. Not a single prayer that they pray has any effect over those demon powers that are running uh, the, the, our society right now. That are affecting the innocent. Now what we're going to do is when we see things going on out there, in the world, not only are we going to have a fortified prayer and divine authority to go out against it, but we've got to be all the more aware of how Satan would come in and try to attack people in the ranks and in the company of God's house. And I, I praise God for everybody going out on Saturdays, knocking on doors, reaching out to the lost. But we've got to make sure that we have some Saturdays taking care of the house. Making sure that everybody in the house is taken care of. Don't play games with the devil because he doesn't play games. He takes whatever little bit room we will give him and he comes and kills and steals and destroys. And we're going to rise up in Jesus' name now. And every one of us are going to become responsible for the people that are around us. If you're 13, you're responsible for the 12-year-olds. You listen to me. Because we in a war. Huh? If you're 14, you're responsible for the 13. 15, 14, 16, 15, 17, 16, 18, 17, 19, 18. 20, 19, 21, 20. Huh? Who are you responsible for right now? Huh? You get yourself a list. Who are you responsible for? You get yourself a list. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Who are you responsible for? Well, you need to touch heaven and get responsible for a bunch of people. Who are you responsible for? Well, you're going to get in. You need to get yourself some people... You don't have anybody go look for someone. So I'm going to be responsible for you. I'm going to help you. Who are you responsible for? Well, you better get through the program. Who are you responsible for? Who are you helping? Well, get with the program. Dear people, we're going to have to watch out for one another's souls. We can't let stuff be going down around us. You're going to have to be watching. You're going to, everybody's going to have to get a hawk eye. You with me? Be your brothers and sisters keeper. Get into their space. Get into their business. Huh? Watch out for this soul. Run every devil off you see harassing anybody. Amen? Amen. He's good. We, have to, we have to start right here in the ranks of the house of God. Amen. Father, we ask, I ask to touch Diane right now. Lord, you know all the things that are happening. You know her needs. Be 
Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Are you standing? I'm standing, but... <laughs> Come over here. Dear people, I want you to ask yourself the question. I want you to look around. Who on the planet right now is standing for holiness, righteousness, purity, and the moving of the Holy Ghost? I am. And, and I'm telling you, where that banner is being lifted, there needs to be a rallying. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm fighting battles everywhere I turn because men are running headlong into apostasy. You talk about crucifying Christ afresh. I don't really see it going on around here. I don't really see it going on around here. Thank you, Lord. But I do see it going on in churches a mass where they assemble themselves and call upon the name of Jesus, go get drunk, go commit sexual immoralities, and continue to come with their hands lifted high, supposedly praising God. They know God in it. And there's got to be a place where there is a change. There's got to be a place that there's got to be a lighthouse. And in any place that there's got to be such a lighthouse, it's going to be under a sailing attack and slander by Satan. And you guys are going to have to gang, gang up in the ranks. Say, so here we stand and will not be moved. You Amen. foul spirit of hell. Huh? Amen. Amen. You're going to have to watch out for those around you now. Now I'm hearing it stronger than I ever heard it in my spirit. And I've been talking to people about it for the past three weeks, probably more than I've ever talked about it. And Father, I thank you for the anointing right over here on <laughs> Margaret. And Margaret, I want you to lay hands on, on Lindsay because... Jayden. I mean, and Jaden. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay too. Said, Lindsay too. <laughs> because we want Jaden to be able to respond to the Holy yes, Ghost. Yes. Now listen to me. I've seen too many of you children grow up and become adults and not be able to respond to the Holy Ghost. When all the time, you and your husband should know how to impart that to your kids. Now you listen to me. Yes. Yes. History and math and science are not as important as being able to respond to the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Father, and I thank you for giving Margaret wisdom and insight and ability. Yes, Lord. To be able to minister to things of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. To where that there can be no resistance. Yes, Lord. I don't look at resistance. I don't look at, I don't, I don't believe in shyness. I don't believe in timidness. I don't believe in anything that would create resistance as some, to, to be classified as normal and accommodate it. The Lord puts a right and a correct and a proper disposition in our hearts so that we may be able to receive. Now, Gabriel, he's just really sensitive to the Lord. He's been the most sensitive of all of your children and to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, just have him pray for Jaden. Yes. <laughs> have him start ministering Jaden more. He needs somebody to minister to. We're really, we're, we're praying about doing a, a ten, ten, a ten week tent meeting this August on the Mission Training Center, because we're really considering launching a church. I just I've got to have everything right to launch it there properly. But we may just go ahead and just do the 
the meeting whether we launch the church or not. And uh, just David, come up here, man. I'm concerned about you. Come here. Who's watching out for David? Who's taking care of David? Huh? Adam and you taking care of David? Are you guys getting in prayer meetings, touching heaven? Come over here, stand over here, David. Huh? No, we haven't. Well, you guys need to do that. You guys need to get into, to get into prayer meetings. Because the things of the Spirit are more important than things of academic, ac academics where you can touch heaven and heaven can touch you. The Lord says this. And it's in, and I hear it just ringing because I, I feel, you know, many times the Lord prophesied through someone at different age groups because it's really God sounding out something to that age group. And Angelica, you know, prophesying my spirit of the Lord. The Lord's saying, yield me. I'm going to reveal myself to you. So one of the things David needs to learn is he needs to learn how to yield to the Lord. That's a department that you need to develop in a bit more too. And, in, and then you have more maturity here than both of your brethren here. And so you can help impart things to them. Do you understand this and what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So... What is the next step that you need to take so that you're able to touch heaven in the realms of what we were talking about tonight in, in the service here to where you become so sensitive to the Holy Ghost? He carries you away, carries your emotions away. He becomes the master of your emotions. So when you think about, think about things that excite you, that, that make you really excited and happy and Things that cause you to just be emotional. What are those things? And if you, if you look at them, you might find that it's a lot in the self realm. And you want the Holy Spirit to be able to move in with the Spirit of the Son and touch your emotions because he touches us in a way we cannot touch. He has access to something that we don't have access to. He touches, in a, touches us in a way that no earthly thing can touch us. And I want you to understand, David, that this is essential to moving with God in relationship in such a way that God can use you Signs, wonders, and miracles, the preaching of his word, the casting out of devils, the works and ministry of Jesus, but more unfortunately, just so that you personally get to interact with the Lord in realms called heaven. It's the realm of the Spirit. And tonight, in Jesus' name, I'm believing that a work of divine grace would take place in your life. That your emotions, that your passions, that your attitudes, Come mastered by the Holy Ghost. Have you ever prayed in the Holy Ghost until the atmosphere of your life changed? Yeah. Do you feel the atmosphere change? Where there was maybe worry, there was peace, where there was maybe problems that became a manifest presence of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Then you keep doing that. And let those things within your heart and your life become so yielded to the Lord that you become that person who loves Him so much that at the sound of praise, you become a praiser. Yeah. Yeah. At the sound of rejoicing, you become a joyer. Amen? This, the Lord's going to do this for you tonight. He's going to touch you. David, he's going to impart things to you tonight so you can respond more to him. Because you want it. You want this. Father, thank you right now in Jesus' name. 
Deeper still. Deeper still. Right now, everything that would hinder you, everything that would try to hold you back, every hurt, every problem, every thought, every issue, now in Jesus' name, it's removed from off of you, moved out of the way. It's moved out of the way. So then now you can begin to praise Him and you can begin to rejoice and you can begin to leap and you can begin to shout. You begin to pour out your heart's affection, the riches of your emotions upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. For out of your belly should flow these rivers. Out of your belly should flow these rivers of expression. <laughs> right out of your belly should flow these rivers. Hallelujah. John Jolobokadai. Aramanda Ishtepara day, yeah. Rabasta day, yeah, 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 yeah. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ha 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 ha. Malanda day, Nabran. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. There's nothing quite like the joy. It hooks you up with every other part of the prayer moving of God. Ha, ha, Yes. More. 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 Yeah, you folks just need to sit around in a meeting just get, enjoy, get in the joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come here, Adam. Lift your hands towards heaven. Out of your belly. <laughs> Somebody said, what's the big deal about joy? You get to, you find out the place of happy. That's exactly where the Holy Ghost is. Holy Ghost is not crying and sorrowful and sad. He's not. There's no dimension of him. He's not stoic. He's happy. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Hallelujah. I speak healing to your body right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, I speak healing to your spirit. The hurts and the brokenness in your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. You right now in the name of the living God. It's not going to cripple you. It's not going to paralyze you. But it's going to be a big place of room where, where Christ Jesus come rule over you. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the master coat and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord of Star and Embry. Lord of Star and Ambritaka. Membre de Faith. Hallelujah. You know, I'm so blessed with what's happened to Ulysses just recently. Men, God touched him and healed him. And it was like, well, you, did, you had to be on medication since 2001, right? Ninety-eight? Huh? Ninety-three. And all those things are addictive. They're just totally addictive. And the big miracle is that you've not been having to take any of them because there's been no pain. And then the second big miracle is that you're not addicted to them. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Ulysses, we love you. And, you know, I, I think that one of the best Facebook pictures that I've got up in a long time is Jonathan out at the baptism last week. <laughs> Jonathan, never lose that man. That realm of heaven that is there for you, my dear friend. It will, uh, that beautiful thing that was happening to you right there on the beach. I mean, I am a witness that it gets stronger every day. You just stretch out those hands towards him. You say, oh, God, I'm so hungry for you. Your anointing is more important to me than life itself. Thy loving kindness, oh, God, is better than life. Hallelujah. 
it just increased more and more. Who's watching out for Jonathan? Angelo? If you don't have anybody watching out for you, walk around saying, I need somebody to watch out for me. I need somebody to pray with. Hallelujah. Oh, Cora Mangesi Bruta. Lore Manglish de Brutano. Se breve carna mandale. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ibre baki da remembre bi karma mamre bar ming da bra basa remembre bre mamre bebe. Bre me mamra man so bre bi gardi gal bra bata remembre bebe bre me da bra basa bra ma. Bre bi gal bra man bala bra bi bi bala bra so bre me ti bre la mandari. So bre bi gal bra man dala bra bi bala bra man bala bra gal bi bi la mamre bebe. So bre bi gal bra man dala bra gal bi bi la mamre bebe. So bre bi gal bra man dala bra gal bi bi la mamre bebe. Si sa ro bo bo riva ya. So ya la la be bre be. Si yo yo ro. So ya la la be bre be. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this fire. I thank you for this fire on the inside of John. Father, let it burn with your glory. Let this fire burn with your presence. Father, make a fiery evangelist out of him. Oh Lord, make a fiery evangelist with your anointing upon his life. Oh God, that breaks up every stronghold. Father, I thank you for the passion that is in John for you. Your love, oh God, that has been poured into his heart. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that likewise you raise up such zealous souls for you, oh God. Father, people who are just given over, oh God, for your glory, your divine purposes. Yes, Lord. Who's watching out for you? Your dad? <laughs> you need somebody else. Hook up with. Hallelujah. Everybody needs to get hooked up. Needs to get linked up. Need to get linked up. You better make a sharp line that I do ya. Ya time, spine, peace. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. This wellspring of life from the Father. This anointing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shevre time. Thank you, Jesus, for this anointing right here. In Gina's life, Father, I pray you use her. Use her, Father God, in a mighty way for your divine purpose and for your glory. What's up? Are you standing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many times a day do you believe that you should step into the j manifest joy of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> this is a quiz. <laughs> All day. Oh. Woo. I'm talking to every one of you tonight. Right now. How many times a day do you believe that you should step into the manifest presence of the Lord that produces joy? How many times do you reckon? One, two. Well, let me just say this. If there are those here tonight that you don't practice one, start there. I don't want you to tell me how we ought to begin the joy all the time and then depress yourself and make it feel like, you know, my goodness, I'm so far from being, who knows, I might not even be saved. Start this one, just. Thank you, Father, for some of you right here. So, so, tomorrow, determine. 
You say, well, I'm just too busy. I'm too... No, you're not. How many of you have a commute in your car? You'd be full of joy before you ever get to work. You might even actually need help out of your car. Just, pr just begin in the morning when you get in your car. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Till the joy comes. The joy comes. The tangible presence of the Lord will fill your house. Fill your car. You walk into your workplace. People, people experience the presence of Jesus through your life. Then after you've experienced one joy in the, one joy of the day, build up to two, and then find yourself just going from joy to joy. You must give yourself to these things. We must give ourselves to these things. We must be continually filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns, hymns and spiritual songs. We must build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping ourselves in the love of God. If we're going to walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit, if we're going to be developed and matured into the things that the Holy Ghost would teach us. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you lay such a burden and insight and a wisdom upon Angelica's heart for Katie that she'll be able to speak with your authority and with your voice into Katie's life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give such an anointing to Anaka, such an insight, such a revelation concerning the things that are going on in Charity's life that she can be a mouthpiece of help a strength blessing. The one thing we're going to do by the oven, the grace of God, is we're going to shut the back door, as it were. Amen. Yeah. We're, we, we're going to make sure that any way that Satan would try to come in and begin to kill and steal and destroy, he's not going to be able to. Amen. If there's anything, that, dear people, if there's anything we want to walk in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and discerning of spirits is about, it's right there in the practical application of watching out for one another's soul. Seeing what's going on, saying, look, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna turn this pedal to the gate right now. We're gonna break off this stronghold. Now, let me just say this to you. When I, many times, when the meeting starts, I can see, like tonight, there's some challenges tonight at the beginning of the meeting, to the meeting. Those challenges aren't here now. Because you, you, on Sunday morning, you leave out of here. I mean, the power of God was intense here this morning. The place was charged with the atmosphere, was charged with the presence of the Lord. You could, you could feel it in the parking lot. <laughs> and then what happens is, you know, you go home and you got all these things going on. You come back and you're tired, a little bit weary. But it's an important event. What's going on is an important event. The things the Father wants to accomplish, we'll break through every time. We'll, we'll, we'll come to this place in Jesus' name where everybody is able to receive what God wants to supply by His Spirit. Because without it, you're not going to be strengthened. That's why the Spirit of the Lord said, as you see the day approaching, assemble yourself all the more together. He didn't say, don't go to church as much. <laughs> he said, go, go to the meeting more so you can be strengthened, so you can be encouraged, so you can be equipped to stand against the evil day. Don't, how do you stand against the evil day? Can anybody tell me? How do you stand against the evil day? Think, think, think. 
be filled with the Spirit. Huh? Amen? Amen. I'm gonna, I, want to, I want to help a couple of you. When you feel like that you have pressures on you or whether they're financial or relationship pressures, you know how to deal with them? Total, with total abandonment, say, Lord, I care not for myself. I know you care for me in such a way I don't need any more help. I totally resign myself over to your care and keeping. You do that. You let the Lord take care of you. You just go to sleep. You rest. You don't have any problems. No matter what the threat is, if it's your life, your life's being threatened. Fine, whatever. Lord, I'm, you're, I'm yours. I'm going to go sleep now. Because I know you're going to take care of me. I'm going to rest in you. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, can you watch with me for just one hour? Can you guys stay awake for one hour and pray with me? This is pretty intense here. You know what I'm getting ready to go through? Can I have a little help, please? And he comes back and he finds them sleeping and he goes, come on, kid, come on, just, just a little prayer with me, will you? Pretty intense God saying to his disciples, please pray with me. Pretty intense, isn't it? Then when, it was, when the prayer was all finished, the battle was run, he said, sleep on. Rise up, let us go. Rest on now. It's done. We can rest. You can rest. He's got you. Turn your life completely over to him, and he's got you. Okay, turn, I said, turn your life completely over to him, and he's got you. I command you in Jesus' name, do not hold back anymore your life. Do not, do not hold your life back anymore from him. Don't hold you. Give it to him. No, give it to him. Give it him. Everything. All your cares, all your aspirations, all your desires, all your wishes, all you want, give it to him. Say, Lord, it's yours. I'm not going to be in charge anymore. Amen. Amen. Dear people, I want you to agree with us tonight. We need a miracle. We need a financial miracle. I know you need, I know many of you here tonight, you need a financial miracle as well. So I've got the plan. Was given to me directly from the Lord to take care of the financial miracle. And he said that if you would sow and if you would give into the ministry that and you would do it cheerfully, not under obligation, but you would give to the ministry, to the church. And he says... He would cause all grace to abound unto you that you would have all sufficiency in all things. And he said, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But he said, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. And I'm just believing God that everybody's going to get a generous harvest tonight. You're going to hook up with us for a miracle. We're going to have a miracle offering. And you're going to have a miracle provision. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.